What is up, guys? It is a sports nerd, Bradley Walker, and welcome to the Walker Report, part of In the Zone Sports Talk Radio, part of uh, NGSE Sports. Remember the website, guys. It's NGSESports.com for all your current sports content. Welcome in, guys. Happy Thursday. Uh, this show also has an official Instagram page, the Walker Report official, and we have an email address for any business inquiries. But the show is sponsored by CreatingZenSpaces.com, the local choice in St. Petersburg, Florida, for house cleaning, organization, decluttering, and pet sitting. It's about finding the peace within you and adding comfort to your life. And guys, remember, Zen Spaces begins with you. Be kind to yourself and one another. Uh, some sad news about my sponsor. Um, according to her Facebook page, one of her clients, she found, committed suicide in her apartment the other day. Uh, so thoughts and prayers are out with the family who lost their loved one. Uh, but I, I did happen to read that online uh, the other day. We are also sponsored by Garrett's Carrots, designer jewelry and luxury accessories. Illuminate your inner self, shatter the trendy norms, and open up your world to a newfound level of confidence and admiration. Garrett's Carrots, designer jewelry and luxury accessories at GarrettsCarrots.com. Welcome in, guys. Let me bring on my two esteemed co-hosts and gentlemen. Good evening, sirs. Let her know. How's the week been treating you? Yeah. Let's talk sports. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, well, I guess we can we you know we can talk about Lou. Uh, the World Cup is gonna the World Cup of soccer is getting ready to start. Next week or the week after? Next week. Let's put it this way. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Get ready for some World Cup soccer action. Sunday. <laughs> but of course, we, uh, play against, we play against Wales, right? Is that who we start yeah. against? We play Wales on Monday, Monday, Monday. And it's going to be a whale of a game. Oh, boy. <laughs> but get this. But get this. The coach's, the coach's name for Wales is Moby Dick. <laughs> okay. Okay, that joke didn't work. Okay, forget that one. <laughs> you can't make it up, but somebody does. Fire? Yeah, no, no, the, the the whale joke. We got it. Yeah, I mean, whales, if anyone Moby didn't Dick. get that, what he was what he was referring to. Yeah, whales, Moby Dick, get it? Jeez. <laughs> okay, uh, cross that one out. Yeah, um, I have a few World Cup articles that I wanted to talk about. <clears throat> one of them is, I guess, the. Irani team, Iran, by the way, the Middle Eastern team. Yes, uh, Iran so far team. away. Um, Thank you. He's going to let players protest oh, yeah. at the World Cup, despite the regulations. It's probably Can tell what, me why they are protesting. Did something happen? Something. Some woman was. Um, I don't. I don't know exactly. And I hate to be that guy where I spell it off at the uh, fire off at the hip, but there was something about. Um, the uh, headscarf that they wear. Yes. And she wasn't wearing it properly or something like that. And, and, then, and then she was stoned or something. And now. Right. It's a big brouhaha. Ah, okay. Okay. Something like that. I, I'm not a subject matter expert, expert, so. It is inspired. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know what exactly happened. She wasn't wearing it when she went and where she was supposed to be wearing it or something, and yeah. I think she, I think she was stoned to death or something like that, and um, yeah, now everybody's really mad about it there. So yeah, good luck with that. Well, what happened? Got, that no man with the no sin cast the first stone. No, right. Um, uh, and then so um, and then of course it sparked nationwide outrage and protests across the country. So you know, good luck with all that and. Well, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. In Qatar, the, the well, Mer don't they kind of consider and, and well, correct me if I'm wrong when I say this, and everyone out there in the Middle East, women are second class citizens. They're beneath men mm. in some in some Middle oh, Eastern countries. Not all. It, uh, in some ways, yes. In other ways, no. I mean, it's a very complex, complicated issue that can't be summarized by three morons on a podcast. And not just us, but any three morons. Um, you know, we don't. There's seven thousand, seven hundred years of 
of of history and both good and bad and and oppression and non oppression yeah. alike and and to broad brush it across the board, um, you know, there's just as many well to do hoity toity Islamic women who are happy with the status quo. True. They yeah. run the show. They're they're the big shit. They're large and in charge, and they like it that way. And so. To, to broad brush it and say it's all men or all women or anything like that is, uh, it does a disservice to the nuance of the issue. And yeah. we're just three morons on a podcast, and we're neither neither it's it, you know it, we're not subject matter experts on on Middle Eastern policy or religion or uh, my my thing is you know and, and you know being an American I come at for I come at it from an American perspective is you know. Is the individual's right to do whatever they want, yes. you know, and 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 um, you know, I don't think that personally, I don't, I don't think anyone should be forced or subject to doing something they don't want to do. So that's where that's where that's where I have the biggest hang up is because, in in their cultures and in other cultures, it's not just Middle Eastern. It's it's you know, there are plenty of there are plenty of uh, Christian sects that are very that have very Traditional values. Let's see women's role as being in the home. And so, as Lou said, you know, not he without stone, sin cast the first stone. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, the other one, it says, uh, this is from ESPN.com. It says, Guitar World Cup 2022 Sport Washing Security and Soccer. Uh, I'm not sure what that what sports washing is or what that means. Um, are they poking fun at the World Cup because it's in a country that yeah I think they, they are. don't think they hosted or I mean I don't know what, what that I'm not really term, sure what that the uh, what it means. Hang on a second. Let me open yeah. Let me open the article and see what exactly. The ESPN writer had to say about this. Let's see. Okay, so it says this is by Mark Ogden and Kyle Fornagra. Nearly okay. 12 years later, it stands as a moment that defies logic. Former FIBA president C. Blatter stood at a podium in Zurich, Switzerland, and prepped. Uh, the con convined dignitaries for the second World Cup host announcement of the night. Moments earlier, Russia had been awarded the 2018 World Cup, with Blatter landing it, uh, lauding it, something that would do a lot good for that part of the world. Then he turned his attention to 2022. Blatter listed the candidates as Australia, Japan, South Korea, Qatar, and the United States of America for delivering the line that has been replayed endlessly in the decades past since. The winner of the organized 2022 FIBA World Cup is Qatar. The decision was made more widely understood later when the United Department of Justice said FIBA officials took bribes to secure hosting rights in both Russia and Qatar at the time. Though it was stunning, the most popular sporting event on the planet was headed to a tiny Parisian Gulf state lacking a pro and soccer culture, and with the torrid summer heat, minimal infrastructure and concerns about the country's track record with human rights that seemingly should have served as immediate disqualifiers. A peninsula that juts out from the eastern coast of Saudi Arabia into the Parisian Gulf, Qatar occupies roughly the same amount of land as Connecticut. Its population of about 2.5 million people is comparable to that of Chicago. We go to the new land, said Blatter, beaming out of the crowd, the Middle East was awaiting, and I would say the Arabic world was waiting for a long time to have the World Cup. Now they have it. I'm not going to read the article all the way down. It goes into a huge... No, that, that's plenty. For five yes, yeah, that's so, why it's like reading, reading a book. Yeah. yeah I mean, I've been uh, here all night I reading don't. that. You know, that yeah, you I go just through. on that part by itself, but yeah. You see what I got to go through when I write an article. I see it all the way down from here... The hearing, there's no way I'm gonna get all that yeah. done. Yeah. Well, we can give my—I'll give you my quick thoughts on that, and we can move on to something else. 
Um, I don't know. <laughs> Those are my thoughts. Honestly, mm -hmm. I'd like to see some actual evidence and more than just speculating and finger pointing. Of course. Um, would there be bribes? I wouldn't be surprised. Would I take a bribe? Yeah. I can't. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like it's like uh, Dusty Rhodes said, uh, or Ted DiBiase. Sorry, wrong, wrong wrestler. Everybody's got a price. What's your mm -hmm. money? Money, money, money. Right. Yeah. You know, and I, I think I, you know, I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. I just say I understand. Mm -hmm. Cause I can, you know, we talked about that on the show before. I can be bought. Name a number. Give me a number. Give me a number. Give me a number. What's the number? Cause, I cause, think, cause, I think we talked about that too, where like the same thing with, with the live and PGA tour, how players are right. for money. And I made an example on the show saying that if in the zone paid me more money than NGSC, well then I'm going to go. We would have you know, left for, for in the zone and in the right. zone ended up right. folding up and going away. So, I mean, yeah. and neither one of them are paying us in terms of full disclosure. Right. Not that we won't take we won't take pay, but but we are not being paid. Um uh and the views and uh, views and opinions of the host of the show are neither that of their uh of their advertisers nor endorsed or whatever that uh, that was yeah. through for those all those infomercials back in the day. Really, uh, really <laughs> um but no, you know, I, I don't I don't know. I wanna see receipts. Um is it odd that Qatar's getting it a little? I would I'm not gonna say that it's not odd, but I mean, you know, I, I think. Sorry, excuse me. Yeah. Trying not to puke. Um. Oh. Anyway, um. Not notwithstanding, some of the the things about it's just it is odd that Qatar is getting the World Cup, but uh -huh. I mean. If, it, if, if in two weeks we're sitting here or saying that was a wonderful World Cup and it went off without a hitch, then we'll be sitting here saying it was a wonderful World Cup that went off without a hitch. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Somewhere that it could be... Wait, I got... It. It's a wonderful life of a World Cup. No, I... No, I... <laughs> it's a wonderful World Cup? No, I, no, we might get... They might get super that. No, no, it's just... It's just those, uh... It's just those, um... Uh, da, 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 what's his name? Uh, I'll, I'll come up with Patrick Dempsey, but that's wrong. It's the guy from Mad Men. Right. It's his ads, but it's just Irish soccer fans scouting, scouting, shouting racial epithets. Yeah. Yes. The uh, it's uh, it's the World Cup without a Santa Claus, but it's just Irish soccer fans shouting racial epithets. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's beginning to look like a World Cup. Right. It's beginning to look like a World Cup Christmas. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've, seen the we'll show ourselves. you've seen the commercials with, with yeah. John Hamm as Santa. That's who I was trying to come that's up with. Man. John, that's oh, John Hamm, where he announces, they said, well, wait a minute, what does everybody want? They won a World Cup by the United States. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Yes, it's you it's have just to, it's you have to watch, that, have to watch that, that that commercial. Oh yeah, that's what that's what the joke was. It's it's the it's a year without a Santa Claus, but it's just Patrick uh, John Ham with uh, doing those commercials. Except it's Irish soccer fans shouting racial epithets. That's it. Uh -huh. That's <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. John Ham. John Ham is is Santa, and he's like, what? What are you talking? What? How do you? How dare you interrupt my my holiday? Yeah, to have this world. How dare you? How dare you upset? You know. And he goes, "Oh, wait a minute! I can give everyone what they want—a World Cup championship for the United States." That'd be and so I have, nice. to giggle, I have to giggle inside a little bit. Like, mm, I don't know about that, but okay. Well, they are the 19th yeah, team I'm in right. the world, so don't. They're not. They got an outside shot. I'm. I'm not doubting them or anything. I'm just saying. I. It's been a long time and. If they get out of they get out of group play, then we can we can celebrate. I, I well, I think honestly, let's score a goal. You know, yeah, I think that's, that's got to be that's you know. The first thing we got to do. <laughs> we haven't been very competitive in world. You know, yeah, yeah. to kind of get away from the politics of it and talk talk the sport of, of soccer. 
And I'm no, again, I'm no subject matter expert in soccer, so I, I'll defer to Lou and he can correct me if I'm wrong, but we haven't really made a good showing in the last 20 years in World Cup soccer, That's from what exactly I understand. Right. And, and well, so, no, again, you know, we, did the, we did make the uh, knockout round after um, winning, uh, stunning, uh, stuttering the third game of the uh, group stage. But since then, uh, I've done Jack. And we this. really haven't. And bef- Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I got it. I'm dreaming of a World Cup Christmas, just like the ones I used to have. Oh, uh, but but um, you know, and so I, I think that's the that's the goal for the U.S. is just not get embarrassed at this point. Go right. out, play some spirited soccer, kick the ball, and don't let them kick. Don't you know, kick the ball and don't let them kick the ball. Right. You know, play good midfield defense. Right like net, not your own. Yeah, yeah, right. Own well, goals are the worst. If there's one sport that I feel bad to be a goaltender, it would be soccer. Yes. You have that big ass net that you can oh, right. Could yeah. you imagine an NHL goalie with a with an equivalent size net? <laughs> that, was. that would be cool. That would be interesting to see the whole thing with the ice net. Yeah, that's that's insane. That's and incredible. you know, I've played a you know, I've played a little pickup goalie. It's fun, but um, I just, I, I, you know, for me, soccer is a great sport to watch live because you can watch what's going on, but to watch it on TV, I find it very boring. And maybe Lou can explain why. Yeah, I guess it's a good question. Why do you like watching soccer? What's, what's the appeal? Cause I don't, I don't get it. I, I'm like nonstop or anything. You know, I like baseball where you're stopping every five seconds. Cause someone would have to spit on the mound or whatnot. You know, you don't get as many interruptions. You know, there's a lot more actions. Very fast pace. It's like you know, it's, it's it doesn't feel like you know ninety minutes or two hours. It's, it's, it just goes like that, and you're and you're on the edge of your seat the whole mm-hmm. time. Well, most of the time. We're having a baseball. Well, he's the same, he's the well. same way. It's consistently moving. Yeah. They don't stop either. Yeah. Right. Well, I guess I was gonna. I was going to say, you know, because I know a lot of people don't like auto racing because they feel it's it's just the same thing. It's an endless parade of cars going around in a circle. Yeah, um, and and. Um, and so, you know, for me, it's like, I can't explain why I like it. I just do. I just do. I, I, I guess that's kind of my, my feeling about all sports is like, I, I know a lot of people don't like, I know a lot of people don't like sports cause they think it's boring. And it's like, you know, I, I get not, I get not liking it. That's fine. That's your opinion. You're entitled to your wrong opinion. But I, and I'm like, you know, what makes you a sports fan or why do you like a certain sport? Or in my case, pretty much all sports, like, cause I liked a live soccer game. I went to a handful of soccer games when I was in college and, and live, live soccer, women's men's, it's great. It's yeah. great in person. It's incredible in person because I, and I think the big thing for me I about soccer is, is that when you're trying to watch it on TV, well, they're going to follow the ball. And so if the ball doesn't lead the 20, you know, doesn't go more than 20 yards, it's very boring. It's very uninteresting. You can flip channels and come back 40 minutes later, and the ball still hasn't made it over half, you know, hasn't made it past the, half, the midfield stripe for 15 minutes of gameplay. Yeah. And there's no stoppage. There's no reset. So it's constantly kick the ball 40 yards that way, kick the ball 20 yards that way, kick the ball 20 yards this way, 10, 5, 10, 20, 5, 10, you know, and, and so it's, it's very com- it's it's very complicated if you don't under and then you know we don't grow up we don't grow up with the game like other other countries you know we grow up with foot with American football and and you know it's very you know as a as a country you know individual individual families especially families from the old country like it, uh, Italy or England or uh, you know other European con- you know you, people that are second generation I'm fourth generation myself. So, my grandpa didn't, you know, my great-grandparents were long gone by the time I came along, who might have been interested in soccer. My grandpa was an American football fan. My dad was an American football fan. My other grandpa was an American football fan. So, I didn't grow up with soccer. I didn't grow up immersed in the game. Unlike unlike some kids that are coming up now who's who are coming up playing the game. Yes. You know, I played a lot of backyard soccer. I like playing soccer. Playing soccer is fun. Watching soccer, not as fun. Mm-hmm. And on TV, on TV, 
I think the same thing applies to racing. Like, watching racing on TV can be boring. I am, I'll freely admit watching racing on TV can be boring. Um, but going to a race, being there in person, when you actually get to see the cars inches apart, inches off the wall, it's some of the most exciting moments in sports. And, and, and same thing goes for soccer. When I'm watching a soccer match in person, I don't have to just follow the ball. I can watch what all the other players are doing in a, in a what do they call it in soccer, in a play? Uh, yeah, something like that. So whatever, whatever that would be the right terminology for that, in a movement, I guess. Like it, when, you're, when, you're, when you're transitioning from defense to offense, um, kind of like a rush, like in hockey, right? Where you're watching, where you are watching a rush, and you're watching what they're doing thirty yards across the field. Well, on TV, you really can't show that because where the ball is is where the action is, right? So then, TV they show what they're doing with the ball. Well, it just went ten yards that way. No, it's going ten yards this way. And so, I think for the average American sports fan, it's very uninteresting and unappealing if you didn't grow up with the game. Um. One other thing I was saying, I'll get off this because I babbled and talked over Lou a whole bunch. Um, is that soccer is is a group sport? It is so much better to watch with more than one. I, I can't watch soccer alone. Hmm. But if I'm in a like if I'm in a in a, I was at the Scarborough two and a half years ago, right before COVID, and I was sitting there watching with a guy who likes soccer, and it was a lot of fun. I had a, I had a blast watching the game with him. Yeah. But to sit here and try and watch a soccer game by myself, forget about it. I would have to agree with that. I, I think that if you mm -hmm. watching watching a sport that you're not really a fan of with someone who is a fan of it, it makes it a lot easier because you can ask questions and then you can find out what he or she is like, Oh, I'm like, Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know that that's how that worked and stuff like that. So especially if it you're not an insufferable plot. Yeah, yeah. Um, but okay, I'm gonna be quiet now for a while. <laughs> let's let's talk about Lou's favorite football league. Ooh, what's going on with uh, Lou's favorite football league? Well, I mean the uh, the XFL is coming the back. The yep, XFL the is coming back. Ooh, by the way, the USFL is coming back, and the Tampa Bay Bandits will not be coming to Tampa. They lost the franchise. It is going oh. to Memphis or some other. Okay. okay. So anybody out there that's a Bandit fan, anybody that thought I was going to be able to cover them, that's not going to happen because they are not oh. coming back to Tampa. So they played one so year in Birmingham, and then the team dismantled. And the Orlando Vipers, or excuse me, the Tampa Bay Vipers, are now the Orlando Guardians. So the Vipers are gone from the XFL as well. The four teams or the eight teams that are, are going to be in the reboot are, are the Renegades, the D.C. Defenders, Houston Roughnecks, Orlando Guardians, San Antonio Braham, Brahmans, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Brahman? the Seattle Brahman? Sea Dragons, the St. Louis Battlehawks, and it looks like it is something Vipers here, but I can't read what that is. Is it Los Angeles? Las Vegas? Vegas? I can't really... Vegas. It's Vegas, yes. The Vegas Vipers. So, so there is the 18 yeah, teams coming back for the third. The draft. Go ahead. So let's see. So yeah, I think Seattle's got yeah. something involved with mythical creatures because they got this dragon thing on one side. They got the crack in the iron shell. Uh, is uh, Seattle possessed or something with uh, mythical uh, uh, mythical creatures or something? Creatures. Sounds like something from Game of Thrones. Mm. <laughs> I, I was the thinking draft was two weeks ago, or oh. November sixteenth. So they've already so drafted, yeah, yeah, they've already had their draft. I didn't know anything about it. Yeah, they have already had their draft. I missed it. No idea. Either did I. Sorry, sorry, Lou. I should have had known. I just told you to DVR it. Yeah, I'll look up later. <laughs> right. Let's see when. Mm. Let's see when the season's supposed to kick off. In just a second, let's see. XFL 2023. Let's see here. XFL. 
That'll be interesting and to have to kick off February 18th of next year, this upcoming uh -huh. year. February 18th, so about four days after Valentine's Day, it is set to kick off the third time. Two weeks after. <laughs> What two weeks after the Super Bowl? Two weeks after week. the Super Bowl, correct. Is it a week after? Yeah. Is the Super Bowl on the twelfth this year? I thought the Super Bowl was on the fifth. Not anymore. Remember they because they expanded the, the regular season, so I pushed back a week. Yeah, they did have but one they have one extra regular season. Mm -hmm. Boom. Yeah. They need to move the season up a week. Boo. <laughs> Start this week. I want my I want this to be on my birthday, damn you. Real quick yeah, uh, tennis you. note. It looks like the All England Club, when it comes to female tennis players, are not required now to wear all white. Hmm. That I guess was a rule during Wimbledon. Hmm. Or I think yeah, during Wimbledon, that I don't remember Serena Williams wearing all white. This you wear all yeah. Labor Day. Especially, especially after Labor Day. Oh. Right. It's a fashion profile. Wimbledon is relaxed for all day clothing to all female players to wear colored undershorts to be more comfortable. Oh, I'm not even going to read that on their periods. I understand that. Wimbledon strict mm -hmm. policy about all white attire for players is one of the best known features of the Grass Courts Grand Slam tournament. The All England Club said it's decided to update the rules. Um, the new rules that women can now wear solid mid dark colored undershorts, provided they are no longer than their shorts or skirt. Okay, so they have relaxed that. That's pretty cool, I have to say. I mean, nothing against all white, but it's kind of cool to see them wear color. I know, obviously, through the years, both men's and women's tennis, the outfits have changed through the years, they're not, you know, not as. What strict as they used to be and stuff like that. So that's another stuffy old white people sport. Yeah, I mean that's I will say that 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 is definitely one of the sporting events I want to attend in person one day is Wimbledon. I definitely want to go over there and and see and see that be there for the entire entire thing. Two weeks. Yeah, it could be fun. Um. I guess, guys, I'll jump to the UFC. I guess. Um, oh, yeah, a couple of good fights. Passed away. Oh, yeah. Died at 38 years old. I don't know if you yeah. heard that story. Yes, yes. I heard something about that, yeah. Oh, man. But I, mean, I, haven't, I haven't been paying too close attention. Are there any big fights coming up for UFC? There's a whole, there was a fight last Saturday. A couple of good fights on Saturday night. Were they in? Where were they at? Were they in? Were they on? In, were they in? Fight Island? Were they no, they were back. I want to say they were in New York. I think it was UFC 287, I think it was. Okay. Uh -huh. I haven't watched UFC in a long time. so I only watched because I stopped by Buffalo Wild Wings after um, yeah. After work on Saturday night. I might be at B-Dubs next Friday night because it's the Florida, Florida State game. Mm. Can't go wrong with that. I have a buddy who's a FSU fan who actually I went to the game with last year. So he wants to hang out. If he's off, I'm yeah. going to go to to B Dubs and watch the game. I know I checked the line already. FSU's a seven point favorite already. Yeah. I checked the I checked the line already. So um but ooh, that hit the post and hit the referee off the leg. Um, yeah, it was, at, it was at Madison Square Garden last week. 281. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple of good fights. I don't know too terribly much about UFC, but I liked watching them. The bar was going absolutely yeah. nuts, so. Oh, Lou, I was look here are the and you can tell me this is um yeah. ESPN's power rankings in the NBA. Okay. So you okay. tell me if they're right or wrong or how you feel about them, because again, I'm not, not the biggest NBA guy I'm trying to get right. more into it. But the power rankings are as follows. Boston, who I saw a little bit last yes. night beat Atlanta, they're number one. Milwaukee's number two. Yep. Denver is three. Portland is four. Memphis mm -hmm. is five. Phoenix is six. Cleveland is seven. And Atlanta is eight. 
Utah is nine. Dallas is 10. Philly's 11. The LA Clippers are 12 oh, for 13. Toronto's 14. New Orleans is 15. Miami 16. Golden State is 17. Sacramento's 18. The Knicks are 19. Indiana's 20. 21 is Minnesota. 22 is Brooklyn. 23 is Chicago. 24 home is City. 25 is San Antonio. 26 is Charlotte. 27 is Orlando. 28 is Los the Lakers. The Pistons are number 29. The Rockets are 30. So that's how they have the power rankings in the NBA. Where did you put the Warriors? I, don't know. I haven't watched too much NBA basketball. The Warriors were mm-hmm. mid back. Mm, I think they need to be ranked lower. They haven't won a game on the road yet. So I think that's even too high for them. And even with um the Nets, you know, because they're still pretty they're still pretty bad. They're not as you know, they're they're mediocre at best right now. I will give credit to the Knicks. I mean, they are doing better than what most people have expected so far. I mean, at least they're above five hundred, so it, that's pretty legit. Of course, Boston, you got you got um you got you got Boston, you got Utah. But they're they're that's right there up there. Clippers I'm not sold with Clippers just yet. Because you know they're gonna be uh, choking sooner or later. You know them. <laughs> yeah, I call them the choke artists. Oh, Georgian. C H O K E A R T I S T S. Choke artists. In big bold. Uh, I again. Let's get to Christmas. I was going to say it's a little early to, to right. be judging oh, no. where they're going to be. Cause... No, no, I, I know. Um, but, yeah. The, look, well, like you that, said, it's – like, it's – it, you know. Aren't there games Everybody on- and their brother. Mm-hmm. I know the – I know There's, like, six football. games on – There's, yeah. like, six games on Christmas Day. I know uh, the Warriors are the – Wow. Wow. Okay. There's a clash with NFL football on Sunday this year, too. I was gonna say Uh-oh. they they have they have the M- the NFL is on a gonna be playing on Christmas Day too. Well, yep. it's Sunday, not mine, of course. Yep. Sunday, Sunday. And New Year's, both. Yes. Yeah. No, I have honestly no idea. I'm just playing with my hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, it you would say that it's a little early to kind of. Say yeah. where the NBA is. Um, Christmas is when they start really focusing on the attention of it. I think I think the bottom five are probably pretty locked. Well, who do they have? Houston, Detroit, Orlando, Orlando. Yeah. Oh, I think all those are young teams too, right? That's why they're yeah. young and bad. Yeah, because yeah. the light, the light, the light. The Magic had the first overall pick last year, so right. right. There you go. Detroit had a top five pick. Houston yeah. had a top five pick. Yeah, so that's why mm-hmm. they're a, they're a young team. Young teams, plural. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the NHL. Um, let me go. Let, let me go through the power rankings of the National Hockey League real quick. Yes. Let's do that. Take a look. I mean, we're about. Still early yeah. in the season. What, three weeks in now? In the Not NHL. So let's yeah. take out CBS Sports. Is. And, uh, so this is their this is their power rankings. Right. The New Jersey Devils at number one. Wow. They have the Bruins at two, the Golden Knights at three. Hurricanes at four, Islanders at five, Avalanche at six, Florida, the Panthers at seven, Dallas is at eight, the Kings at nine, Toronto is 11. I'm sorry, excuse me, Toronto's 10. 11 is Winnipeg, the Lightning are 12, the Kraken are 13, the Oilers are 14, Calgary is 15, the Rangers are 16, the Canadians are 17, the Wild is 18. The Pens are 19, the Wings are 20, Blues are 21, Capitals 22, Flyers 23, Predators 24, Sabres 25, Blackhawks 26, 
Coyotes 27, Senators 28, Sharks 29, Blue Jackets 30, Ducks 31, and the Vancouver Canucks are riding the pine at 32. Hmm. Kind of like the NBA. Yeah, too early. Yeah, 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 yeah. And actually, you spelled my name wrong, but thank you. But anyway, Why would they wear an FSU hat? He went to Michigan. Yeah. Well, no, he's talking about me wearing... Uh, yeah, well, he spelled the name wrong, so... You yeah, can come yeah. in here chatting shit. You better spell shit right. Right. You're right. <laughs> we, uh, we, we, we check grammar in this house, okay? So, Absolutely. <laughs> um, no, I kind of... I feel like... Well, Jersey's 13-3. and three. Um, right now, but it's still so. We're 16 games into an 82 game yeah. season. Uh, we're we're barely we're not even to the quarter mark yet. So, you know, a lot can happen in the next by Christmas. Uh, I think and Christmas is is the um um is the benchmark that I really start to I start to judge everything by Christmas and then the All Star break. Yeah. And we go from there, you know. And once we get once we get through Christmas, and we get to February, and get through Christmas, you know, some teams you know got some injuries, people coming back, people going out, lineup changes, fluctuations. So, um, just waiting to see what happens, and you know, and you know, and the big thing is it's going to be stabilizing, you know. Yeah. Well, I think it also comes down to you have some teams that have injured players that are going to get mm-hmm. players back. Like the Lightning Week, we're going to get Sorelli back. Um, you know, we have a def- – I forget the uh, – Zach Bogosian is also okay. getting him back soon. So, again, but, we, um, you know, there are some players. Um, have a good night, Rich. We wanted to say hi. What's up, guys? Um, but yeah, it, it comes down to, um, staying healthy, getting guys back, obviously. Um, yep. so again, we'll staying have healthy, see, right down the stretch and stopping the bleeding, you know, can, can you stop the bleeding? Uh, can you, can you get back to, to winning after going on a three game losing streak? Right, right. right. Well, I mean, um, I forget. Some team was on a, a long losing streak. I think it might have been the Ducks. They hadn't won a game in like four or five games. So, yeah. I mean, you got to, you know, just, I mean, just like with, with, with USF, you know, you, you practice and you're not getting your results. So after a while, it's like, mm-hmm. okay, are we just that okay. bad or are we going to turn the corner and, you know, win a game before it's all said and done. You know what I mean? So, you know, I don't know. But, yeah, it's still early. Um, John Tortorella had a blow-up in a press conference. I guess we're not all surprised about that. <laughs> Torrance had, had, had a meltdown? <gasps> yeah, that's – yeah, that's – I want to show you my shock face. <laughs> typical, typical John Tortorella um, – Press conference, yeah. obviously. If, you know, Tortorella is a is an absolute. It is the poster child for winning is a great deodorant. Yes. You know when when he's winning when 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 his teams are doing well when he's winning cups. You know the sun is shining and everybody's pooping rainbows and and it's all it's all good in the hood. But they go on a they go on a they lose a couple games, a game, and. All of a sudden, it's like the worst thing ever. Mm-hmm. So you know, <laughs> yeah. So, Again, uh, so early. I mean, I don't okay, yeah, have so, any. There you are, bud. Hey, girl. If any, go ahead. I fixed it. I was gonna I was wonder why you were so quiet because it came up. Yeah. It was muted. On, on his end, but I was going to say, if there's anyone that knows any Philadelphia Flyer writers you want to come on the show, please come on. We want to talk to you about John Turo. I'm just yes. going to throw that out there. <laughs> I just, I'm going to throw that or, out there, you know. Or on Lightning Writers or 
Blue Jacket Raiders. We'll take Rangers. anybody. Rangers. Yeah, the Ray NHL was going to be for. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Seven right. nothing Titans up in this game. Obey. Excellent. I got a dollar on the Titans. Excellent. He showed me his gambling tickets. He it messaged did. him. I got, I got receipts, baby. I got receipts. <laughs> he he's gonna get paid. He's gonna get paid. That's that's how. Gonna try. Gonna try. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah. He's gonna get paid. He's gonna get paid. Yep. Paid and by way, I apologize uh, for running late, but uh, I was on my way into the kitchen to get some tea, yeah. and I came out from between the bed and the dresser, and uh, I had a uh, I had a great trip. And that's a good of a fall. Out. My ankle again. Mm. I thought at first I thought I broke it because I couldn't move it. Mm. But uh, I'm able to walk on it. So if I'm able to walk on it, I didn't break it or fracture it. Probably not. No. Yeah, be, no. I, I'd be icing that thing or heating it. Uh, however, whatever foot your boat. Well, right now I got I got my ankle support on it. Okay. There you go. Smart. Yeah. And that's that's a smart thing. So, MLB baseball is over, but the, there's been some awards handed out. There has. Yeah, I'm the not MVP. happy. I'm not happy with the with the way uh, Dusty Baker got cheated out of it. Yeah. As far as the American League manager, with Terry Francona. That's right. It should have been. Yep. It Francona should have been uh, Dusty Baker. And um, who? Who won it for the Mets? Who's the Mets manager? Uncle Buck. Uncle Buck. Buck Showalter. Okay. Yes. He's the now he he uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think he's the first manager to win with four different franchises. Yes. Yeah. So he's won Manager of the Year with four different teams mm -hmm. in his career. So That's the first time a Mets manager ever won it. That's true. You're correct. That was also a first. Really. I believe. Yeah. And just in the. Justin uh, Verlander won the Cy Young. Cy Young. No so surprise. Yeah. Sammy, uh, no surprise. Al Alcantara. Alcantara. No surprise is there. The National League, Sandy Alcantara yeah, for the Marlins. Alcantara. I think he's the first Marlins pitcher to ever win a Cy Young. I don't think there's ever been a Marlins pitcher that's ever won a Cy Young either. So, a lot of firsts. And then the MVPs were handed out. Aaron Judge. No surprise. No surprise no there. And then the NL was Paul Goldsmith won the NL. Oh, yeah. MVP. That's a surprise. I, I have to that say was that. A, yeah. That's a surprise. Who won that say. one? Paul Goldsmith. Smith of the Cardinals. That's a surprise. Yeah, himself, not really. yeah, up a year, though. Not undeserved. Not undeserved. Yeah, Looking at his splits. I think it was yeah, a surprise I mean, at all. I, 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 I think everyone – when the season started with everything that was going right, they had the Cardinals pencil in to be in the World Series. Unfortunately, right. the playoffs got differently, but they had yeah. they had the Cardinals in the World Series. So with the so we'll see how that folds out next year for them. Uh, I know here closer to home, the Rays got rid of a whole bunch of players. G Man Choi is gone. Kevin Kiermaier is gone. There's a lot of players, a lot of new blood going to be in Tampa next year. And again, free agency has started, so. Yeah. I haven't heard any big moves in the ML in the MLB, so it's interesting to see one. Yeah, I don't think there's been any major ones yet. Um, Other than maybe Verlander opting out, but that happened last week, so. Well, th there are reports, bud, that I've been hearing on local radio here that Verlander's either going to go to the Yankees or to the Dodgers. That's what I've heard. That again, uh, I think I think he signs a one day deal in Detroit to retire a tiger, and he he hangs him up. And he could do that too. Uh, he could do that also. <laughs> that's where that's where my money is. Verlander, Verlander hanging him up uh, in in Detroit. And that could that could also happen. You know, I yeah. yeah I, th again, that's what I've heard. You know, you know, great sources have said that. He, those are the teams that he's favored to go to. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to happen that way. I mean, right? It doesn't. And you know, I'm just a, I'm just speculating. Maybe that's wishful thinking on my part, as a tech. 
you know, he said he ended up with the Mets instead of the Yankees. You know, I'm saying, right. be, you know, I don't know, or in Philadelphia, you know, where he goes to the like that. It is now seven six uh, Titans. Oh, the Packers uh-huh. got a touchdown. Packers, uh, Ravens blocked a uh, field goal attempt. Ah, I mean, extra point. Extra point. I'm watching the Lightning Calgary game. The Lightning are at home wearing those god awful retro jerseys that are absolutely you horrible. See, you gotta see what jerseys the Packers are wearing. Look, make them look like a Convicts. A lime, uh, drink. <laughs> Right. Are they wearing the are they wearing the old the uh, the yellow striped convict type uniform? No, tonight? they're wearing the white with the with the with the stripes on the sleeve. Oh, and okay. Okay. The stripe down the pants. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, I mean, I understand that they have to wear them and I know that some of them were I know I I thought that the Bucks were going to go back to the creamsicle but they're not going to do that this year, according to what I've heard. So, I like the Cowboys. Brady wear the old cream stick orange. I like the Cowboys <laughs> throwback. Yeah. No, I'm not being biased. I just like it because the the color scheme that they that they have in it. The dark blue. Yes. Yeah, the dark, the darker blue, the navy blue navy with the blue. lights with the white sleeves. The white yeah. sleeves. Yeah. That's a classic. Like the Roger Stallback era. Tom Landry, that type of cowboy era. Yeah. I don't I don't like I don't like our color rush. The all white. Those are, the color rush was just a terrible idea all around. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was. And now and now uh they want to change it again. They want us to uh, they want all the teams to get new uniforms. That's where the fans will spend more money. Right. Yep. Yeah. This time they want him. They want him all blue, with a black star, and a chest. That could be interesting. That's weird. But, no, I like the traditional, the way it is now. I could see them going all right. silver with a blue, the blue star. Hey, like I like that. Helmet. That would look good. That would, that would be, be something that, would be that cool. you can see. Yeah. <laughs> But I would love I mean, to that be they go back to their uh, to their Clemson to the orange and white. Yeah. Oh, you talking uh, about cream sickle? Yeah, the cream sickle. And what they what they had the buccaneer on the helmet. Yeah, that's the old cream sickle and white. Yeah, that's the. Yeah. The reason they don't wear those shirts anymore is because. <laughs> those they were the loser. Bay buccaneer football. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those were the loser jerseys. They've changed the logo and they've won two Super Bowls. So just, just, just the. When just I started the watching football, that's how I remember the Buccaneers wearing wearing the cream sickle. Old cream sickle, orange, yeah, with the so Buccaneer Bruce. Yeah. Buccaneer Bruce on the helmet. And that, and when I started watching the, the Cowboys, I remember them in the in those uh the uniforms you were talking about. The navy blue. blue. The, the navy, navy blue. blue the yeah. throwback. Or the white, the white with the blue sleeves on the end. That was yeah. cool. That was cool. They've changed since because they've kind of changed. They changed the uniform right when you know the when Troy and Emmett and all them left. That's when the uniform got changed to that lighter blue. They wear now more silver than it is blue. Yet yeah, they've changed it around. I don't know who makes those decisions in Dallas, but <laughs> Jerry Jones. I was gonna say, is it Jerry Jones? Who is it that makes those decisions? Yeah, it's gotta be Jerry Jones. And somebody asked me the other day, who do I think is the biggest? Uh, who who do I think is the weakest link in Dallas? I said, uh, you want me to you want me to name three weakest links or just one? Hmm. I can start Go with ahead. Jerry Jones is number one. Jerry Jones, okay. Dak Prescott is number two. Yes. Zeke Elliott is number three. Mm. Zeke? Howard should be the starting running back from here on out. Yes. I agree. I agree 100%. He's played very, he played well last week in that loss to Green Bay, but still he played very well last week. And I think, and I think Cooper Rush should be the starting quarterback. 
No. Mm. No. Uh, no. Uh, no. Dak's coming back from an injury. I don't know. That's – no. That's mm. – yeah, and I don't. I don't know. I don't know about that. I, I'm, 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 I'm uh, afraid of the Vikings right now. Got a book on the Vikings. Yeah, I was. I'm say, they, them. Uh, they're eight and one right now. But so. then again, you know, every year that we play the Vikings, we we've, we've always had Cousins' number. Uh, Gerald, who do you guys play on Thanksgiving? The Giants. Oh, that should be a good football game. That's a divisional game. That'll be a good football game, too. Yeah, that should be good. Are you guys at home or are you guys on the road? We're at an at t Stadium. Home. Oh, they're home. Okay. Yeah, they're the home team. Where do the Lions play, Adam, on Thanksgiving? Uh huh. Buffalo. The Bills? Buffalo. And New England plays, uh, plays uh, Minnesota. Oh, we're playing on Thanksgiving. I didn't know that. I didn't know the Bears yeah. were playing on Thanksgiving this year. Okay. And that's going to be another good game, too. All those games are going to be some, some great games. Is there only three or is there four? Three. There's three. Uh, three games? I, three games? I, can, I can find out real quick. I have the schedule. I was going to say we can, um, speaking of football, we can jump to college football. Um, okay, yeah, Brad. Go ahead. It's, uh, it's Buffalo at Detroit. Mm-hmm. It's the Giants at Dallas. And it's New England at Minnesota. Yeah, I don't think the Patriots are going to win that game. So I'm just going to put that out there right yeah. now. Minnesota's a tough football team. Um, I want to start, guys, kind of on a sour note or on a sad note. I want to send thoughts and prayers to the family that lost. Three young men were killed yes. on the campus of Virginia, University of Virginia, by a former football player. Um, now, I have a question to ask you about that, Brad. Go ahead. Have you heard that? Have you heard anything? The reason why he did that was it because he was kicked off the team, or what? Well, I mean, there are different things I've heard. Yes, he was kicked off the team. He was a freshman. I know he started as a freshman at running back. Um, I don't know what exactly happened. I've heard that he may have been defending himself against these three. They were bullying him. I don't know the whole story. Um, yeah, I was wondering if there wasn't more to that than just. Everything. Me yeah. too. I know that something the game had, against Coastal Carolina has been canceled, though. They have canceled their game this week. Because I know so something I, had, had to happen for him to do this. He just ain't, he just wouldn't walk up, walk on, walk up on campus and start shooting this three. Right. right. Something, something Correct, had, right. had to have happened. Because why would he target just those three people? That's what I was – I was wondering if there wasn't more. But I don't know. You know, I'll wait until the uh, – Investigation because if it was, yeah, it concludes thing, if it was just a random thing, it'd be like another Charles Whitman down here on the UT Tower, he'd be shooting everybody. That's kind of what I was yeah. thinking. Yeah, I was thinking that he, there was he just targeted those three, those three players. That's what I was thinking, but I don't know. That was it, seemed very premeditated if it was only three and not more than that, right. So, but I don't know. I'm not uh, privy to any of the just investigation. My that's just my thinking. Yeah, that's, that was where my mind went to, too, was that this was premeditated. Like, this was in, like, he got who he wanted to get. Well, that's what I'm wondering, too. Maybe if while he was on the team, these three bullied him in some way, maybe there was some kind of uh, hazing Hazing. incident with him and. He got back at them for that. Um, I think we all know hazing goes on in every level. Um, mm-hmm. On every level of sports. Every one of us that's, that's played football or basketball, any kind of sports, has been hazed. It's it's a it's a ritual. Right. You know, like when I when I was in high school and I played, you know, it was like, hey, we put we put jock. Uh, I mean, uh, itch cream in somebody's jock strap. Yeah. I see hot. Or threw them out in the locker room in a jack jock strap or just a towel on. No, we never yeah. we never do did do anything uh bad. It was all in good fun. Right. Yeah. But now now times have changed. Yeah. 
No, it happened to me. And what did I do? I just laughed about it. I thought it was funny. <laughs> and it, you know, itch powder in your jack, or you know, throwing somebody's clothes in the in the in the shower and stuff like that. You know, but I don't know. Things it's go too far. All, all that is a part of joining the sports team. Yes, but some, you know, some things just go too far. You know, look. Look at NFL. They do it. The veterans do it to the rookies when they come in. You know, they. Well, I know. Make, I know. In Major League Baseball, they make them carry like early backpacks to the bullpen. I've seen that a bunch yeah. of times. That you know, if you raise games where you know there's a rookie and stuff like that. And yeah, you know, but then there's movie, just Brian Song about Good Brian Piccolo and Gail Sayers. Mm-hmm. If you remember that one part where those two were talking in the locker room. And the uh, and the captain mate stand up and said, "Okay, yeah, uh, I think he was talking to either Gail or Brian when he said that uh, one of them owes them a uh, owes the team a song." See, that, probably Brian. That was the name of the movie. Well, that's that's part of that's part of uh, it's part of the culture. But then, but you know, as much as that, then you know, we laugh and we joke and say it's no big deal. Then you look at guys like Richie Incognito. And the and the horrible things that he was doing to people, that and being was, that you know, yeah. you know, and and, and that was just being a jackass, you know, and yeah. it was it wasn't okay what he was doing, and so you know I'm not saying that shooting people is okay, I'm, I'm not saying that you know, but I'm saying you know that we gotta we gotta establish a fine you know a firm line not a fine line but a firm line. Exactly. To what's not what's not okay, you know, and making you know if, just because you think it's funny doesn't mean somebody else is going to think it's funny, and you know, I kind of think like would you you know my my thing is is like would I want my mom to know about it? You know, if my mom found out about it, you know, if, if if my mom finding out about it would be embarrassing. That's that's my line, you know. Well, if I was if well, I would she make me quit the team. No, just like more than, more than just disappointed, you know. When would my mom be disappointed in me if I did this? And that's well, where you know, like I think sometimes, but sometimes people have consciences and other people don't. They don't. Yeah, and and some people, you know, yeah. like it's not gonna. It doesn't bother me. I think it's funny. So, you know, it's just a joke, yeah. and. And and other people take that stuff t- seriously, you know. I don't think you're. I don't think it was. I didn't think it was a joke. I didn't think it was funny. Well, and so, like, like I said, well, what I, I, did he should he should have been banned from the NFL for life. Indeed. Well, um, what happened to Kyle Beach with the with the Blackhawks? Yeah, that was happening yeah. there, and it was hidden. You know, and not just his teammates; it was doctors too that were doing yeah. that to him. You know, so you know, I now, and now with with uh, Richie and Connie to already, uh, and also with him going around making those uh, those uh, uh, how can I put this without sounding uh, inappropriate comments? Yeah, about uh, people not not wanting to be with women. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. you could say that. And, yeah, that's fine. That's your opinion. Keep it to yourself. Shut the hell up and move on. I agree. Mm-hmm. And that's what I, you know, and like when, it's, him saying those saying mm-hmm. stuff like that. That's why I'm saying he should have been banned from the NFL for life. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And you know, and that sends some sends the message to the younger guys out there that you know, you know, you send the message that if it's okay, you know, if we're not going to punish the guys at the top, then it doesn't matter down here at the bottom. You know, because. I look at it this way. If I had a teammate that preferred uh, men over women, but if he could help me get to get to the, the Super Bowl, yeah, get to the top I'll of the mountain. That's all I'm worried about. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you know, it's a respect thing, right? Yeah. You know, you respect my choices. I respect yours. Exactly. You know, look, I'm not. I don't. I don't swing that way. I don't play for that team. But if you do, go for it. You do you. You know, and let's keep it professional. You know, keep it professional. If you, can, if you can help the team get to the get to and the you know game or the or the Super Bowl, hey, right? Let's more let's, power to us. Let's get let's, it. Let's do this. 
Let's no, get look it. At that, look at that one black player that Dallas had that came out as being uh, that way. Sam. Uh, Michael Sam. Yeah, Michael Sam's. Right. Yeah, but he wasn't going to help anybody win anything. So. But I'm, no, but I'm just saying, you know, he, he. I didn't know that he was that way until he came out. Right. Who cares? It doesn't matter. It yeah, has no bearing on the game. You know. You know and and yeah, my, I don't if care. If he can help you win, win games and win win championships, what should it matter? It you know, should not matter. One just, like with, just like with them talking about them being in the army and navy and the marine and mm -hmm. and on military. Military. Hey, mm -hmm. I'm in the foxhole and I'm getting shot at, and there's a guy next yeah. to me, her men, and he's shooting back. To right. Me. It's all I need. Yeah. I'm That's all I need, right? Well, let's get it, you know? As long as you, got, long as you got my ass covered and far and back, I don't care. Yep, I agree. I I, I don't think it should matter. Um, sexuality, religion, whatever no. you are, you right. know, whatever you are, that's up to you. That's your opinion. If you're going to help us win or succeed in any way, shape, or form, whether you're a female and you're a head coach, or and you can get us, you can get us to win. Who cares? I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Either. I don't care. I've had women bosses most of my life. I don't care. What do I care? If they can make me better as an employee, and they can make the, my department better, I could care less. Let them do it. Yep. Let them do their I work for my cousin's uh, delivery service, and uh, his sister ran it. So you can basically say she was she was one of my bosses. Boss. Right, correct. I didn't have no issue with that. Yeah. And some people right. would. Some people have that egotistical right. that a woman can't be their boss. Yes, yes. So yeah. You, know. yeah, you mm -hmm. stop to look at it. You stop to look at it today. How many women in the corporate world has higher positions than men? A lot. Right. Yeah. There's more than you think. More out there than you think. I think the CEO of IBM is a female, by the way. Yeah, and look and look at the look at one of the look at Apple. One of the one of the top directors on the board is a woman. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, the the president of USF is a woman. Yeah. So there you go. So, so I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know. I, we're going to see a woman president one day. We're going to see a woman head coach. It may not be in football, but it might be in another sport other than college basketball and, and college hockey. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to happen down the road. No, so that's the, yeah. thing that, that's the thing that makes, that makes me mad all the time. I hear it. Oh, a woman can't do what a man can do. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Stop and think. We got women mechanics. Yes. We got women doctors. Yes. We got CEO of major corporations that are women. We got presidents and vice presidents of banks and, and loan institutions that are women. Yep. Correct. Mm -hmm. And you go sit there and tell me a woman cannot do what a man does. You know, there's times I see women out doing, you know, when I was working for an AC company, we had women out there in the field. Yeah. Doing duck work. Yeah. Well, I'll put it to you this way: when anyone ever says anything, women can't do anything. Just give them this oh, for an boy. example. Serena Williams won a major tennis tournament two months pregnant. Yeah. Answer me that question right there. Yeah. If the if guy can do that. Answer if, that question can, right there. Can I make? Let's say if if me, if us men could get pregnant, you think we could do something like that? Hell no. We'd be in bed complaining and moaning yeah, and. Yeah. Direct the Mundo. I wouldn't try to do that. But I was going to say, getting into college football, guys, it's, yeah. it's, this is the 40th year of Joe Starkey's call. The ban is on the field. The Cal Stanford. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I read an article about that. The what kind of field? The band, the band is, is on the field. The Cal Stanford game. It. Yeah. The band is on the field. And then, yeah, Cal won that game. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, he – he said in the in the article that he never he never rehearsed anything prior. It just came. He like yeah. I guess 
he yeah. had Rob Wooded, what he was going to say. And that came out. And again, that's one of the most famous calls in college football ever is that call. And it's the 40th. <laughs> and I saw that. And I don't know if Cal, I don't know if Cal's played Stanford this year or not. Maybe they're playing each other this week. I don't know. I haven't looked at the, the, the thing. I know neither one of them are in the top 25 anyway. So there wouldn't be. Uh, if, we want talks. Top, if we want to know the college football top 25, I already have it. Yeah. I know who the top six are. I was going to ask you guys if you thought you agree with who the top six are. I can go to Saturday. If you don't mind, Brad, I can I can, I can go, go through ahead. the top uh, 25 go ahead. For, the That's college, fine. for the college. Number one is Georgia. Mm-hmm. Two is Number Ohio two State. Is Ohio State. Michigan's three. Uh, Michigan's three. TCU's four. Tennessee's five. five. LSU is six. six. Yep. Seven is USC. Eight is yep. Bama. Nine is Clemson. Ten is Utah. Eleven is Penn State. Twelve is Oregon. Thirteen is U is UNC. Fourteen is Mississippi. Fifteen is Washington. Sixteen is UCLA. Seventeen is UCF. Eighteen is Notre Dame. Nineteen is K State. State. Okay. Oh, State. Twenty is Florida State. That's a shoe, okay. 21 is Tulane, 22 is Cincinnati, 23 is Coastal Carolina, 24 is Oklahoma State, 25 is Oregon. The Ducks, okay. Yeah. Right, right, Because right. here is the scoreboard from last week. Actually, Tulane's playing right now. They're beating SMU 28-7, to who the – who USF gave up a lot of points to last week. Um, Georgia beat Mississippi State 45-19. Ohio State beat Indiana. Michigan beat Nebraska handily. TCU mm-hmm. escaped Texas. Tennessee blew Missouri out of the water. Washington beat Oregon. Yeah, I got that Texas and TCU game. I got, I got something to say about that. Go ahead. If y'all watched that game, remember when that kicker when that kicker went down, mm-hmm. and they called that roughing the kicker penalty on us. We did not touch that kicker. TCU's kicker. Yeah, we wasn't nowhere near that kicker of roughing him. Yeah, right. uh, yeah. That's. I mean, that game I think was a little. I mean, I thought we we. I know we had talked about that last week. I think that game was a lot closer than a lot of us predicted predicted it to be, in my opinion. <clears throat> but if it wasn't for that call, I think I think we would have beat TCU. We would we would have uh, gave them the first loss of the season. Uh, LSU beat Arkansas thirteen to ten. That was Alabama, another close one. Alabama beat Ole Miss thirty to twenty. I was kind of hoping Ole yeah. Miss would pull off the upset. Clemson won 31-16. Arizona beat UCLA 34-28. Utah beat Stanford 42-7. Penn State shut out Maryland 30-0. Uh-huh. Uh, North Carolina beat Wake 36-34. That's a close football yeah. game. Boston College set NC State 21-20. UCF beat Tulane 38-31. Now they're tied atop the AAC. I think those are the two teams that are on top of the AAC. Kansas State beat Baylor 31 to 3. Notre Dame got by Navy by a field goal. Mm-hmm. Purdue beat Illinois 31 24. Florida State beat Syracuse 38 to 3. Vandy upset Kentucky 24 21. Yeah, that was crazy. That was, that was a surprise game. Vanderbilt beating Kentucky. I mean, the most. We didn't have that one. We did not have that one. Well, like we, like everyone always says, any anybody can be anybody any given Saturday. Yeah, I know, but still, Vanderbilt. <laughs> but especially on the road, Vandy won on the road in Kentucky. They were in Lexington. They weren't that, at home. That, that was a road game. Me, that really surprised me. Yeah. Vanderbilt going up to Kentucky and beating them in Lexington. Yep, they went to Lexington Unreal. and beat them. All right, so this week, guys, we'll start on Saturday at Saturday at 11 a.m. Wow. Early game as Navy is in Orlando to play the Knights. UCF's a 16-point favorite, the over-under being 53. 
UCF. Yeah, UCF. Yeah. Yeah, UCF. Okay. Okay. At noon, Illinois will be on the road against in the big house. Michigan is an 18-point favorite, the over-under being 40 and a hook. Michigan. Michigan, okay. Michigan. Yeah, I go with that too. I think the the Wolverines are on that on the right path. Right, right. I don't think they're going to have one of those trip games like this week. Looking Coach at Ohio Cobra. State right? next Coach week. Cobra has the Wolverines fired up for this season. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a good football game next Saturday when they meet Ohio State in Columbus. Um, oh, that's that's the next that's one my- is. That's going to be a dog fight right there for Michigan and, and Ohio uh-huh. State. Yeah. yeah. Um, the next game is also at noon as the number four Horn Frogs go on the road to Waco to play Baylor. TCU is a two and a half point favorite with the over under being 57. I mm-hmm. would really like to see Baylor upset TCU, but I don't see that happening. Okay. So Horn I got to go. I gotta go to you, but I'm hoping I'm hoping and praying that Baylor will upset them. Okay. But I gotta go, but I'm going TCU though. Yeah, I got okay. TCU. The next game is Austin P on the road in Tuscaloosa, and there's no no line or over mm-hmm. under in that. Bama. Yeah, Texas. Alabama. 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 So oh, yeah, Bama. The, oh, the next game. <laughs> Has the number 19 Seminoles at home against Louisiana. The Knolls are a 24 point favorite with the over under being 52. The Raging Cajuns? Uh, Raging Cajuns. Raging Cajuns. I take the Raging Cajuns. Knolls. Mm, I'm taking FSU. I hate to say that, but I got to take the Knolls. They're at home. Yep. I don't know. Oh, okay. I, don't know the I don't know if they'll cover. I don't know if they'll cover, but I know they'll they'll win that football game. Give me the Knowles, then, if, since they're going to be at home. Yeah, it's not yeah, they're, home. they're in I'm, Tallahassee. They're playing Louisiana, not LSU. I know it's okay, you. Well, I'm still yeah. taking. I'm still taking uh, FSU. Yeah, the Knowles. Yeah. yeah, this is not LSU. This is Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Um, the next game, guys, has the number fifteen. Kansas State is on the road in Morgantown to play the Mountaineers. Kansas State is a seven and a half point favorite. The over under is fifty four and a hook. I'm taking Kansas State. K State the points in the over. I'm taking West Virginia. I think K State. Country okay, Roads. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Drew. Um, the next one has the number twenty three Oregon State Beavers on the road in Tempe to play the Sun Devils. Oregon State is an eight-point favorite, but the over/under is fifty-four. Oregon State. Oregon State. I'm taking the Beavers. I'm taking the Beavers too. Um, the Beaver. The next one is at two thirty p.m. As Boston College is on the road in Notre Dame, the Irish are twenty-one point favorite with the over/under being forty-three. Go Irish. Let's go Irish. Irish. Yeah. Fighting Irish. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take BC to upset them. BC to upset them at home. Okay. All right. The next one is the number one Bulldogs on the road in Lexington to play the Wildcats. George is a 22 and a half point favorite. The over under is 48 and a half. That's too low. George on the way. Jesus. Uh, is, is Kentucky going to show up for the game, or are they just going to forfeit so they don't get embarrassed in the se- for a second week in a row at home? No, forfeit in the second quarter. Yeah, I'm taking George all the way. <laughs> yeah, dogs all the way. <laughs> um, the number two Buckeyes are on the road in College Park, Maryland, to play the Terrapins. Ohio State's a twenty-seven and a half point favorite, with the over/under being sixty-three and a half. I'm taking. I'm taking Ohio State. Yeah, I don't see a letdown in uh, in yeah. College Park, so give me Ohio State. Okay, all the way. Uh, the next game, as the uh, Miami's on the road in Clemson to play the Tigers, the Tigers are a 19 point favorite. The over under is 48. Mm. 
Miami and who? And Clemson Tigers. Uh, LSU. Oh, Clemson. Miami, Clemson. Uh, Jesus, why did I? Yeah, I meant Clemson. I just pretend like I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm take Clemson too. Miami needs one more win to be bowl eligible. I think that win may come next week. <laughs> um, the next game has the number 11 Nittany Lions on the road in Piscataway to face the Rucker Scarlet Knights. Is that? Am I pronouncing that correctly? I got Rutgers that right. Piscataway. Piscataway. Um, Penn State is a 19 point favorite. The over under is 45. Penn State. Sorry, Lou, but I got to go Penn State. Yeah, I think I'm going to go Penn State too. Yeah, uh, Penn State. Okay. The next one is in Louisville, Kentucky, as the NC State Wolfpack are on the road. Louisville is a four and a half point favorite. The over under is 45. I like NC State. Bounce back from a, a tough loss against BC. Louisville. Yeah, I, I like I like NC State on in this one. Okay. All Louisville. right. Uh, the number twenty five Bearcats are on the road in Philadelphia to play Temple. Cincinnati's a seventeen point favorite. The over under is fifty one. Cincinnati. 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 Okay. All right. Uh, the next game um, is in Chapel Hill. Georgia Tech comes to town to play the Tar Heels. Uh, UNC is a 21-point favorite. The over-under is 63. Well, let me ask you a question. Is Mac Brown still coaching the Tar Heels? Yep. As far as I know. They're 6-0 in the conference. They haven't uh, lost a conference game this year. That's a conference game? Ooh, it is boy. a conference game. Yeah, I'm, but Tech hasn't I'm, had a team. I'm going to go Tar Heels. Tar Heels. Georgia Tech hasn't had a team worth talking about since the triple option went out of went out of vogue in nineteen seventy three. So, give me the Tar Heels. Tar Heels, okay. But with basketball, I would take the Tar Heels, but this is a football. I gotta go with Georgia Tech. Okay. Not a chance. Okay. There's uh, one. In every, there's one in every crowd, folks. Yes, there is, and I'm one, and I'm the one. Well, I correct me if I'm wrong. North Carolina's got to be in the ACC title game, right? They're nine and one overall. Yeah. Season. Conference. If they're not, they're there's some more of this picture in the ACC title game. Um, uh, yeah, I think they're the best team in the what the central. Something like Coastal? that. I don't know. So yeah, I forget how the divisions are. Uh, the next one is an SEC game as the number five Volunteers are on the road in Columbia to face the Gamecocks. Tennessee's a 22 point favorite. The over under is 66. Let's go Volunteers. Yeah, I'd say Tennessee. I'll volunteer. That's South Carolina's not good. <laughs> They're not a good football Game team. Cock. Um, the next game is the number 14 Rebels on the road in Fayville. They're at uh, Rebels are two and a half point favorite. The over under is 65 and a half. Rebels, Rebels. Is that all? That's Old Miss, that. Old Miss, right? Old Miss, correct. Yep, Old Miss, Miss in Arkansas. Arkansas. Yep. Ole Miss against Arkansas? Ole Miss against Arkansas. Yep. You know what? I'm going to go on a limb. I'm going to go to Arkansas. Razorbacks. Okay. All right. They're at home. Give me the Rebels because I'm a Rebel without a cause. Okay, James Dean. <laughs> what did you say, the Lou? Next game, James Dean. The next game is the Battle of Oklahoma. The Cowboys are on the road to play the Sooners in Norman. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma is a seven-and-a-half point favorite. The over-under is 66-and-a-half. You said Oklahoma State's the favor? I uh, know they're the underdog. Then give me Oklahoma State. Yep, Oklahoma's the favorite. I'm taking the I'm taking the Cowboys. The Cowboys, okay. All right. Um the Battle of Los Hold Angeles. On, you guys got me. Go ahead. Well, let's put it this way. I think it's gonna be rather sooner rather than later. Oof. Sooner rather than later. Okay. You want, you want, you want take you Yes. <laughs> Come on now. Um, <laughs> the next game, the next game is the Battle of Los Angeles. Good movie. Um, it's USC on the road in Pasadena by UCLA. The uh, Trojans are a two and a half point favorite. The over under is seventy six. Oh, that's gonna cow, be in the Rose Bowl. That's gonna be in the Rose Bowl. I'm taking UC. I'm taking USC. USC, okay. Trojans. Trojans. 
Trojans. Okay. All right. Um, the the next one has the number number six LSU Tigers at home in Death Valley. They're welcoming UAB. That's the Dragons. LSU is a 15 point favorite. The over under is 52 and a half. <clears throat> I'm going Tigers. Tigers. Yep. They're at home. LSU. They don't lose too many games in Death That's Valley. <laughs> um, the next the next game has the number seventeen. It's the Huskies, right? Washington, the Huskies, right? Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. They're at home against Colorado. They're a thirty-one and thirty-one point favorite with the over under being sixty-four. Washington is the favorite. The Give me the Huskies. Huskies. Washington. Uh-huh. Mush. Uh, the last one is the number 10 Utes on the road in Oregon to play the Ducks. Utah's a two point favorite. The over under is 60. Quack, quack. Quack, quack. I like the Utes. Ducks. I'm going to take the Ducks. Utes. Let's put it this way. Ducks. Ducks. Two Ducks, two Utes. Okay. I like that. I like when it's split up like that. I have that. a question for y'all. Let's see, Let's see what y'all are thinking. Texas and Kansas. And that's gonna be in uh, that's gonna be in Manhattan, Texas. Hang on a minute. Give me look one what the second. Line what the line is? That's what I was just about to look. Let me see. Let me pull that up real quick. <clears throat> okay. In Manhattan, I'm not sure. Texas, Kansas, in Manhattan, in Lawrence, in Lawrence, Texas is a Lawrence. nine point favorite. The over under is sixty three and a half. They say in Texas is a nine point favorite. Yes. The long so Jack Kings is Jack Kings has got him at nine and a half, nine. <clears throat> and what's what's the spread? Sixty three and a half. I'm taking Texas, but not the points. Yeah. I don't see no way in hell that those two teams are going to combine for sixty something points. Yeah. yeah. Combine for 64 points to win the bet. So that's to be a 32, 32, 32, something like that, somewhere in that na- in that neighborhood. Uh 30, uh, 30, 34. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. I don't see that happening. Both teams are not playing that well. Yeah. Well, I can we can talk about the USF Bulls. They are playing tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. I'll be watching the game because i got to write an article about it. They're playing the Tulsa Golden Hurricanes. Tulsa is a 13-and-a-half point favorite. The over-under is 58. I'm, uh, I guess I go with Tulsa. I was going to say, I don't think you go against the team that's favored. No. USF hasn't shown much this year. No, Tulsa, <laughs> So I would take Tulsa. Yeah. That's one of the yeah. teams you cover, ain't it, Brad? It is. The yeah. only good thing about it is Brian Batie, their running back, is 137 yards short of a 1,000-yard season on the ground. So he might do that tomorrow night. If not, I'll see him do that against UCF next Friday – or next Saturday uh, on the 26th, the Saturday after Thanksgiving. So Okay, who do y'all think is going to win the Heisman? Uh, Hendon Hooker. I, I agree. Hendon Hooker. Yeah. I could be going on a limb and saying that because I think a lot of people would say C.J. Stroud, the quarterback for uh, Ohio State. I'm going to go with Stroud. No, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Hendon Hooker. Well, the reason why I haven't I, I haven't seen Stroud yet is that what the man is wearing down there in the corner, they haven't played them yet. So wait until we see how he does against Michigan next, next Saturday, baby. We'll see how. I'm assuming that that's where college game day will be. Just should be. Season. Should be in Columbus. Should be. Uh, it'll probably be in Columbus, Ohio next week. I would imagine. I I would imagine that's where it would be. <laughs> oh, hang on a minute. Before we go, oh, I have to look at one more thing. Is I didn't mention the Gators are playing Vanderbilt. I want to see what the line is. I go with Gators. Yeah, I want to see what the line is because I know they're neither one of those teams are ranked, but 
the Gators, be, I think, will become bowl eligible with a win, or they already have six wins. Okay, so who's playing? Uh, Vanderbilt and Florida, and Vandy, they're – the Gators are on the road for the final two games of the season. And so who's Okay, so yeah, so Florida, four, it's on at noon. The Gators are a 14-point favorite. The over-under is 57 and a half. And the Gators have already won six games. Gators. So, so. I'm going Gators. I think they go to seven and four heading into the FSU game, which I predicted the, I predicted the Gators would be eight and four. So that's still a very, uh, very relevant thing to happen. We have to beat FSU in Tallahassee next Sat next Friday. We have the Black Friday game against them next Friday, so that'll be a little bit of a different uh, portray. Game is on Friday instead of Saturday. And Adam, and can, Adam lost what? his uh, Adam lost his rear end on uh, predicting that what Texas would finish. Shit! So what, did, what did he say? Right here. I had him at eleven and two at the beginning of the year. I told you, games? Adam. I told you. How many games? How many games have they lost? Four. Four. Broke finished the season what? Eight and four. Eight and four. And we can still make the Big Twelve title game against TCU. Against TCU, we have to win out. In order to uh, get into the Big 12 talks, even to be considered for the Big 12 title. And they have they have Kansas. Who they play in the last week? They have Kansas this week. Who they play in? Baylor. Baylor. And Baylor? I, think that, I think that game is going to be in Waco. I'm not sure. I have to look. Nope. It's in Austin. Uh, if Austin. It's in Austin. We got that game. We got that game wrapped up. Let me. Let me. Let me look real quick. I don't feel I don't feel too bad about it. Line is because sometimes the line's out early. Like I, said, I don't feel bad about it though. Already has. <clears throat> and I think I think if we face TCU in a big pro title player. game, I think we're gonna get our revenge against TCU in that title game if we play them for the Big Twelve title. Let's see. Let's see what they have here. Just like uh, like Adam says, any given game, any team can get beat. Yes. Well, right well, they now, couldn't. right now, They're... according to ESPN, they have tickets for the you want you want silent on this there, Brad. Yeah. Uh oh. Brad. Hello. I think he froze up. Page that way. I'm not, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm okay. Sorry about that. I, my internet's been acting up. Okay. It's all good. What, what, um, were about that? what were you saying about the tickets now? They they have tickets right now as low as four dollars for that game. For Texas and Baylor. <laughs> Correct. That's what it says. The $4 are probably up in the nosebleed section. I would imagine so. I would imagine. Hang on just a sec, because I want to see if they'll give you give me the, <clears throat> the line for that game next week. Let's see. Touchdown Titans. Nope. They have no – there's no line or there's no over-under. No line. That they haven't been released yet. Sometimes they'll have them up, and sometimes they don't. Uh, Adam, you might you might just win your bet there, bro. Uh, it's a long way to go. Nine plays, forty-one yards. Took two yeah. minutes and forty-nine seconds off the clock in the second in the second quarter, and it's thirty-two seconds left in the second quarter. See that? I've been keeping an eye on it. Um. But I don't, I don't feel bad about my Texas prediction. They've lost four games by a combined eighteen points. Yes, and that's not bad. That's not bad I, at all. I, you know, like we said at the beginning of the year, you know, it's all subject to change. You know, I think if Quentin Ewers doesn't go down in the Alabama game, we would have won that game. They would have won that game, and um, 
if uh, you know, if uh, DCU, well, DCU sold out to stop B. John Robinson, and they didn't have Texas didn't have an answer for to get DCU off the ball, you know, to make them be to respect the um, Quinn Ewers arm. You know, they held B.J. Robinson to, or B. John Robinson to 28 yards. But I so, can say one thing, though. Our defense did pretty damn good. You, you defense balled out. You scored 17 points. Sorry, right, guys. I'm watching a clip. Scott Wedge with the goaltender for the Dallas Stars was stretched off the ice. Oh. Yeah, I saw that. This can't be good. He He stretched back. To make a save, and it looks like he may have torn I, something in his knee or a leg or something along those lines. ACL? That's a possibility. That no, he, a, he, or a back. He grabbed his back. So could be a back injury of some kind. Um, I, I, well, I, I was kind of hoping it wasn't like a head contusion, like, you know, concussion and stuff like that, but it doesn't look like. That's what it is. It looks like it's some kind of back contusion. Um, so, which is not, not good to see players get hit, stretched off the field. In fact, I saw USF's quarterback, uh, Catradius Marsh, get taken off the field of the game last Saturday. Neck injury. Mm -hmm. He had neck surgery. Boy. He was back at practice. He's not going to be able to play, but back at practice, and he was in a neck brace. But it, I've never, you know. To be in a college stadium and it go completely quiet is scary. And that's how scary it is. Yes. You see no one talking, no one's moving, no one's cheering. That's scary. That's talking a scary about, situation. Talking about the players that can come back, uh, Deshaun Watson can practice with the team, but he can't play you right now. Well, the, the game next week's against Tampa Bay. Yeah. <laughs> the Bucks the Bucks are on the rad on the radar. So yeah. And I yep. and I like to I like to see what see what Deshaun Watson could do with against uh, Brady. Should yeah. be interesting. Should be interesting. And here, I want to get y'all's takes on this uh, Odell Beckham thing real quick. What do you think he's going to end up? Because there's two teams that uh, he's narrowed it down to: Dallas and New York, the Giants. I think he wants to come home. But Cowboys. some people think some people saying that he could that he could uh, go back to the Browns now, also. Uh, Cowboys. No, I'm saying the Giants. The Giants. Yes. Uh, I would have to say Dallas, but but uh, I don't think if he does come to Dallas, I don't think he's going he's going to work out too well. No. No. You don't think he makes that team better? But then again, you know, he could be he could be that slot receiver that we needed to uh, fill, that, that that to take up the slot that uh that Cooper left behind. Hmm. Cuz I can see him making that team better, given given Dak one more weapon to throw to. Um and then again, also we all know that Odell Beckham draws double coverage on any team he's on. There you go. You know, and that opens if, up everyone else. And if he comes to Lamb. Dallas, he can draw that double coverage that can leave CD Lamb and Michael Gallup open. Correct. Yep, absolutely. Because you know, when he got three great receivers like uh, Odell, Odell Beckham, Lamb, and Gallup, who are you gonna double team? Yeah. Well, look, 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 look what, Joe, look what he did last year when he was with the Rams. I know. He had Cooper Cup and Van Jefferson and him. And it was hard to cover who you were going to cover. So I think it makes the most sense. And, you know, going back to the Giants, too, would make a lot of sense. Because he, but then again, I mean, the Giants got rid of Tony. So who do they have as their wide yeah. receivers in New York? <clears throat> and, and, we, got, and we got rid got of him. And we got rid of Amari Cooper, so we need that. Uh, we really yeah. need that uh, that clutch receiver. And I think, I think he goes to Dallas. I think that's that would make the most sense. I and don't I, think he signs anywhere. 
and I think and I think Odell Beckham can be that clutch receiver that we need in Dallas. I don't know. I don't know if he signs anywhere, honestly, because he hasn't played all year. I don't know what kind of shape he's in. I, I it coming going anywhere, whether he goes to New York or Dallas or Buffalo or um uh, or goes back to LA. Yeah, LA makes the most sense, honestly. But there's one thing that scares me about Beckham. That knee yeah. injury. Oh, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, he hasn't. He, he hasn't played any game time since that, the knee injury. Is that knee a hundred percent? Right. Will that knee hold yeah. up for ten weeks or eight weeks of NFL football? Or you know, and ideally you sign him. You don't sign him for eight weeks. You sign him for twelve weeks, right? Because right. you sign him to go win the championship. And you know, if he blows that knee out again in the divisional round. And, you know, and the thing about it is he's going to have to come in and learn a whole new playbook, whole new calls, you know, a whole new route tree. And he, he doesn't, he's got to come in and adapt on the fly. Can he come in and work it day one? I don't say, I don't see, see it happening. Let's say if he does come over to Dallas, okay. I would not say, let's say if we sign him to a two year deal, I don't see him do anything that first year. Because like Adam said, he has to learn the playbook, the system, and all that. But the second year, he could possibly do something if he came over to Dallas. But would you sign him to a two-year deal? But then even again, you know, in that first year, he could draw that double coverage to take that off of uh, Lamb and I wouldn't, I wouldn't double him, though. I'd, I'd say throw him the ball and see if he can go make a catch. Yeah, because I'd still double, I double CD, and and say and make you beat me with Odell, because I don't trust him. If I'm if I'm a defensive coordinator, you no, know, if I'm the you know let's say let's say he signs let's say he signs on Monday morning, right? Well, we know he won't play Thursday night against um, New York or Thursday afternoon against New York, right? So his first game will be what week fourteen? Would be again. 15? Would be against uh, uh one second. She is just I am looking now, looking now, looking now, looking now. I don't see see him. Ah, there against the Jags. No, that doesn't sound right. That would be okay. okay. Lou, you you gonna you gonna have a, a problem uh, come that come that game because you you like both teams. Mm, I know. Oh yeah, so week we yeah, okay, so it'd be week thirteen, um, would be the reasonable start for him, and so week thirteen against the Colts. Yeah. Yeah, we'll um, but I if I'm agree, the but I do agree with you, Adam. I don't. I don't trust that knee right now. I don't trust he's in game shape. Yeah, I would. Uh, I would have to. Uh, I would have to have him prove it to me that he that he's game ready. You know, come in, work with Dak. You know, or or uh, Daniel Jones, or Matthew Stafford. You know, we you know it's or or Josh Allen because I could see him in Buffalo. Um, yes. Just like when uh, Dak came back from that from that ankle injury, I didn't right. know what to expect from Dak. No, was, right. he gonna, was he gonna be the same Dak? Or no. was he gonna be a? Fr- or was he gonna be scared to go out there and take a hit? Right. You know, that's, that's the same thing with Odell Beckham. You know, is he gonna be the old uh, Beckham? Or is he gonna be too scared to take a hit? Well, he hasn't been the old Beckham since his first year, Gerald. So uh, I don't think we're gonna see a return to his old old self. Well, you know what I'm talking about that. That uh, true receiver. At uh, thirty, he hasn't played all year. I don't know. I, I just see, might turn him. I don't. I don't see. I don't see him uh, being being uh, that great of a receiver. No. He's been out I, hurt. 
not until he can get out there and get that knee worked out and get it get it get it stronger. Because look what look how long it took Dak to come back from that from that uh, broken ankle. Mm -hmm. Took him what then almost all season. And when he came back, you can still tell he would that ankle was still a little sore because he was limping on it the first few games of the season. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, you got to bring him in. You got to work him out. He's got to learn the playbook. He's got two weeks to learn the entire playbook before you really think he, before it's really, because even if he signs tomorrow at 3 p.m., I can't imagine him starting this week, right? But then again, uh, we did pick up that uh, former wide receiver from the Browns, uh, Callaway. Right. Mm -hmm. So, did we really need uh, Odell Beckham? No. Would it be nice? Yeah, to I have don't him? know. Would it be nice to have him? Yes. Maybe. Because you know, yeah. even, even but you know, we, even if we don't play him, we could use him as as a possible. Uh, Draft, uh, you know, a trade to get some draft picks. But if you're gonna do that, you gotta play him though, because you you gotta be able, you gotta show he has value. You know, play him maybe one or two games. Maybe, but then again, if he, I don't know, because because really, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking about it, and I'm, I just think it would be kind of a waste of money at this point. You know, I do you have a cap for him to sign him? I look at That's the other thing. Damn if he do, and damn if he don't. Right. You know, you know if you don't, you know, and pick him up, and he and he falls flat on his ass. You know, you're gonna be looking like you're gonna be looking like you're gonna be like a, a chunk. Knock. But a chunk. if you don't pick him up, and he goes to a team that plays against you, and he and he burns your DBs, you're still gonna look like a fool for not picking him up. Or if you know, if he goes to a team and he, you know. And he does draw, draw that double. You know, he might have 15 or 20 catches in the last six weeks, eight weeks of the season. But he does make your offense better because he does draw that double team. You know, also uh, look back when Randy Moss first came out in a draft. Dallas had the chance to pick him up. Right, but they weren't they weren't sold on him because of his attitude. Because of his, well, mainly because of his knee. His off-field issues. Yeah, and his knee. But he went to Minnesota and look what he did for the Vikings. Right. That's what I'm talking about. You know, it's one of those damn if you do Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Situation. You know, if, if if Dallas signs him and he falls on his face, then New York looks looks like geniuses. Yeah. yeah. And then if 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 New York if if New York signs him and he has you know, and he has fifty catches, eight touchdowns and nearly a thousand yards in the last eight weeks. Uh, Dallas sit there, you know, everybody, well, why didn't Jerry sign him? Exactly. And and then, and then you know, like, like we talked about. That's why I'm saying it goes back to that damn if you do and damn if you don't situation. You know, and, and the other thing about it, like, if, if you know, Jerry calls his agent and says, in a, you know, yeah, thanks for the call, but we're, we're, we're leaning towards that. We're, we're leaning towards New York. Nothing you can do about it, you know? Exactly. You know? And and maybe maybe he feels that he fits better, um, in the New York system. Maybe he feels like he fits better in Dallas' system. So you know. And the other thing is, it's is like it's kind of like this. Yeah, and the other thing is the chemistry, 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 chemistry. He has chemistry with Daniel Jones in New York. Can he get along with Dak? Can he get along with the rest of the receivers? Or is he going to be a prima donna crybaby when he doesn't get the ball? Mm -hmm. You know, that, re that reminds me. You, I'm glad you brought that up because you, you stopped and look at uh, Terrell Owens, Owens. He was a crybaby because he didn't get the ball all the time. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even and, thinking about Owens. I was thinking about something a little more recent. Look at Des Bryant. I was thinking even more recent than that. Mm. Okay, who's that? Captain Crybaby himself, Antonio Brown. He threw a fit and scored off the field. And I guess the you know, Jets there, Lou. <laughs> I heard, yeah, I heard he. I heard he's the Jets. With the Jets. Against the Jets. Yeah. 
I heard Antonio Brown's supposed to be signing with the Jets. No. <sighs> they don't need that cancer. No. <laughs> Look, I'm joking. I'm joking, Lou. Lou, hope, they're, they're, so. the Jets are too good of a football team. They don't need him. They're, they're I'm too joking. good. Of a clown. I'm joking, Lou. No, we don't need. We don't need that. We don't need that disease. No. I'm joking. I, I tell I'd you, rather, I'd rather chicken pox again than to have him on the team. I would not <laughs> wish Antonio Brown. I'm on serious. Team. I would not want Antonio Brown on any team. Yeah. No, you know, my thing is, is like you sign him, you bring him in, and now you got a now you got another mouth to feed. Yeah. And what's not to say he's gonna get he's gonna get pissed off about something on that team and throw his helmet and uniform off and walk off the field. Of course. Well, I was I was I meant I meant uh, Antonio I meant uh, Odell Beckham. No, I was talking about the uh, Antonio Brown. Let's say right. Let's say if he goes to the Jets and gets pissed off about something the Jets didn't do. Oh, it'll take him yeah. five seconds. What's not to say he's going to take his helmet uniform off and and run across the field and just to, and with, with a shirt oh, on that Or and you know, I think I think about signing Odell Beckham Jr. is the thing about it is it just creates another mouth to feed. Yeah. You know, and you got you got Zeke, you got Pollard, you got C.D. Lamb, you got Gallup, you got that that Browns receiver y'all just signed. You know, they all want to eat. Galloway. And Galloway. And now how do you get all, you know, you sign Odell. And, of course, you sign the guy like that because you think he's going to make your team better. And the fan base expects you to, to, to feed him the rock, right? And so if he only gets three catches, and let's say Dallas Dallas goes four and four the rest of the way. And they're, well, why did we sign him? You know, so it's like you said, damned if you do, damned if you don't. You know, but but what what I would like to yeah. see though is since we got Callaway, I would like right. to see I would like to see how he would see how him and Dak and the other receivers work oh. together in a in a real game situation. Right, and Zeke is supposed to be back this week. Well, to take so. the truth, uh, I I lost all faith in Zeke. He's been out hurt, so not much you can do about that. You know. He was good his rookie year, but after we gave him that ninety million dollars, it seems like he Yeah. He's, he's been nice. a thousand yard back every year. I mean, I don't know what more you want from him. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, we actually <laughs> signed uh Zeke to try to help try to help us win uh win the NFC championship game and uh that's not that didn't work out too good last year. Nope. Well, he's been a thousand. He's had over a thousand yards in a ten touchdown bag. He's, I mean, he averages four and a half yards a carry. But that, but I do agree with what uh, Brad just said earlier. <clears throat> that Pollard should be the starting running back. No, that's, I mean, I, I don't know about that. Zeke could be your third down or red zone back. Exactly. I think it's the same thing with the Bucks. They have Lenny Fournette. I think Fournette should be the third or um, and the kid that they just picked up this year. And I, uh, his name escapes me now. Had the hundred yard game last week in in Germany. I think he should be the every down back. And then they hand it and give it to Lenny. You know. But then again, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what kind of offense Mike McCarthy runs. Exactly. No, we can. McCarthy we can sit be here. To put, we can sit yeah. and play armchair coach, and, yeah, uh, yeah. But we actually don't know right. what the plays, what are. the plan is. We don't know how many, how many set plays they have for Tony, and how many set, and what's the set of plays they have for Zeke? Zeke, right? Um, uh, and Zeke. Right, so, did we did we use Zeke on first and second, and Tony on third, or vice versa? I really think you need to get him more touches, man. <laughs> But uh, I'm not. Well, he's been out hurt since October 23rd, so. But, but, but before, I don't, I don't see Tony being there next year in Dallas. Oh, is he under contract? Mm. Yeah, this is this is going. This is the end of his rookie contract. Is this his last year? Yeah. So he's due for his big boy contract. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And How I long is he signed for, though? And I don't see. I don't see any possible way 
that Tony's going to stick in Dallas, getting a big contract, being a backup. Depends on what they do with Zeke next year. Uh, the smart thing would do with Zeke. Okay, this comes from a Cowboys point of view, Cowboys fan point of view. Yes. yes. Use Zeke on the trade on the trade block because everybody knows what Zeke can do. Right. Okay. See if we can get a good first or second round pick for him. You know, they go try to get a young receiver. I mean, a young wide receiver, you know, that could that can back up Tony. And go from there. That's just that's just my way of thinking. I could be wrong. That's a good way to look at it. You know, because if, no- if, if we dump Zeke off, okay. That's an additional ninety million dollars a year that we can save. What's left? What's what's? I mean, how many more years is he left on his deal? I think this is his last year. This is Zeke's last year. Yeah. So yeah. They're gonna. So if they get rid of Zeke and Tony, both they have no running back. Exactly. I can't see them getting rid of both of those guys. Either they're gonna bring. I. I if this is Zeke's last year and he's been on the shelf. For the last few years, that might be his token out. See and what I give Tony his big boy contract, but I don't know. Again, what I've I'm been not, hearing, you know, is that I'm, what I've been. I'm hearing not Jerry is, Jones. I don't. I don't own the team, so I don't know. What I've been hearing is uh, Dallas is going to let Zeke walk. Yeah. And then uh, they go, and then they're going to sign Tony to that to the big boy contract. Okay. Okay. And then uh, they're gonna go get another running back, maybe in maybe in free agency, or in a draft. But then again, we do have uh, a third string running back. I don't remember his name. He was number thirty four. But he's but he's just as good as Tony is. They're gonna have to keep mm-hmm. one or the other. You can't get rid of both your premier running backs. No, you can't. He, no. So you Jerry, know, Jerry, Jerry Jones would be stupid enough to let that happen. Well, and that's on him. I mean, but then again, like I said, if we get rid of Zeke, that's ninety million dollars a year that we're saving. Yeah. You know, because what's not to say? Okay, let's say this. This is Zeke's last year on his con- on his contract. What's not to say Zeke's gonna come up and say, "Well, I want another additional ten mil a year on top of the ninety million. We can't afford yeah, well, it. Well, I don't. I don't really, honestly, believe that with what's going on. Well, you know what I'm saying, though. He could ask for more money, but the Cowboys can't afford it. Yeah. See, his 2022 take-home salary sits at 12.4 million. We can't afford that. So let's see. Here's salary cap. Now, this is the website that kind of breaks down contracts and everything. Okay, so here we go. Zeke has two years left on his current deal. Okay, so two years. My bad. He is under contract with the Cowboys until 2027. Uh He is due $10 million. He is due $15 million next year, $10 million the following year. 15.4 15.4 million in 2025, 16.6 million in 2026. Okay, so and that's he becomes a UFA, a if, free agent in 2027. Next year, let's say right. if we trade him next year, we can take that money that we spend in mm-hmm. back, give half of it to Tony, I'll give him a percentage of that, then go out and out in, in the draft, our free agency, and get another running back. Okay. But my, but yeah, let's my see. Here's concern, Tony Pollard. My only concern yeah, about Pollard. Is where I keep him. My only concern about Pollard and Zeke. He's only making nine hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. Let's say if Zeke goes to one of the teams that we play in the East. Let's say if he goes to a team like the Washington, of Washington, and Washington comes and plays us, and Zeke mm-hmm. runs all over us. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what scares me. You know, but then again, it goes back to uh, damn if you do, damn if you don't. 
So he's got he's an eighteen million dollar cap hit this year. And next year now they could mm-hmm. buy him out. They could buy him out for fifty million and let him walk. Yeah. Or they could they could keep him. Or and they could or they could try to move him. Or or they could try to get a deal done with Tony. What I and would do what I would do if could, I was Jerry Jones, I would go ahead and try to try to move move Zeke. And I would, I, I think I would just stick with it. He's a thousand yard bag. Where are you, you know, they don't grow thousand yard bags on trees. Okay, so you would let you would let your no. You would let your solid no running back walk. No, that's not what I said. You can't Why not? Sign both of them. Why not? You can't. You won't have the money to sign both of them. You convert the salary to, to a signing bonus. Tony, 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 making nine hundred sixty-five k. His cap hit is one point one million this year. So mm-hmm. he's a UFA. He's a free agent well, as hey, of the end of the season. Dallas won't have the money to uh, to keep Tony. You might be able to wiggle him in bonuses and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You move the because money around. Off his rookie deal, he may be well, able you can to... restructure. Yeah. When you restructure, restructure Zeke's deal, I, contract I don't too. think I don't think Zeke would restructure. That's you got two million. <laughs> you're getting two million. You're getting two million dollars off the cap hit next year anyway. If you don't, if you don't buy him out, so that that two million dollars is is. Quite a bit to work with. Let's see. What is Dallas's? I wonder what Dallas's cap is going to be next year. They might be able to bring Tony back at say two or three million, four million a year. Mm-hmm. Because, for three years. Out. Yeah, I mean, depending on how many years they sign him for. Say they sign him for a three-year, twenty-four or three-year. I don't know. 13 like million? Dollar contract. He gets 5 million a year or 3 million, 3 or 9 million, something like that, where he gets, then they can say, okay, we'll give you a million dollar bonus for a thousand yard season. We'll give you a 500K bonus for touchdowns. Mm-hmm. So he, you can give might, him incentives. He might, he might agree to that. He's only making 165 k so he's going to do – he's going to want – well, he's going to look at the running back market. He's going to go to his agent. He's going to say, okay, here's what the average running back is making right now. So it'll have to come down to mm-hmm. – will Dallas agree to that? So, And it all depends on what Jerry Jones wants. Correct. But then again, it – Depends too on where their where their cap is too. I know the cap's going up again next year as it always does, but yeah. Again, you don't. I mean, I know if you go over the cap, obviously you got to pay luxury taxes. I don't know if Jerry Jones wants to pay luxury taxes. Uh oh, so, we so. got we got a Titan player down. Uh oh. He took he took a pretty nasty hit. Now the Lightning game is over. We beat Calgary four to one. Well, that's good. Four to one in those terrible throwback jerseys. Yuck. Get rid of those things. So Dallas isn't as with everybody they have signed right now in twenty with let with left in twenty twenty two. And I know I, I couldn't figure out I couldn't find what their cap potential was gonna be. So let me look. Twenty three Dallas cap. If I can, if it'll load, it's being slow today. <laughs> oh, let's scroll all the way to the bottom. So, so right now, before adjustment, they they still have before any any restructuring or, or adjustments, they'll have four and a half million dollars to work with next year. So they can backload Pollard's contract. They could give him, you know, a, a five-year, 
$120 million deal, but put it all at the end when Zeke's ready, when they're, when they're, when Zeke's done, they could give him $3 million, $3 million next year, $8 million in 2024, you know, and $15 million in 2025, or, you know, something like that, backload that contract. And, well, um, it goes back to what I said. What does Jerry want to do? Because this is Jerry's team. That's how Zeke's contract is too. He's, uh-huh. he's backloaded. And so, and 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 maybe they do want to move on from Zeke. Maybe they're maybe they're done. Maybe they, you know, uh, like they have a fifty million dollar buyout. They could trade him. They could they could restructure. Uh, they could restructure De- Zach's De- Zeke's deal. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So they can they could trade. Um. They can move on, like, Jordan Lewis may not, you know, I don't know, let me look at Jordan Lewis. He's a $6 million hit next year, the corner. So they could buy him out, too, and go get a, they could go sign a corner in free, in, in, in draft. They draft a corner and um, save all that money, save $6 million. And there's a lot more, there's a lot of things that they can do, especially if you really like that two-headed monster and, and Pollard and Zeke. You know, if you really think that's the future, there's a giant monster. Um, you 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 can you can just you can rework deals. You can move money around. You can make you can free up cap space. People they they could have they could, somebody could go on long term IR, and they can put they can you know move money. They can move money around and make and make um. You know, maybe maybe they don't re-sign. You know, maybe they move on from Brian Anger to save. A, you know, go sign a punter in in, um, in 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 the draft, late in the draft, or free agent, or you know, unre- uh, un undrafted free agent. Undrafted free agent. That's what I was trying to come up with. Thank you. Yes. Um. So there's a lot of there's a lot of money that they can play with that um. They just have to, uh, like you were saying, Adam. They just have to move stuff around. Do you even? Um, they can also. They could also potentially move. Uh, move on from Trayvon Diggs. Um, there's, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of stuff that they can work on in the off season and you know in free agency and in and in the draft where they can get where they can get some players that maybe that are younger and cheaper. To be able to re-sign Pollard and and keep Zeke. Yeah, that's that's one way to look at it. You know, and and this idea of moving up, getting rid of Zeke is just to me is silly. I mean, he's a five, he's a he averages five yards a carry. He's a better than four. He's better than four and a half yards a carry for his career. And that's what you want. Four yards a rush. That. Four uh, four yards a rush is a first down after three three carries, and that's what you want to be averaging. It's, it's four yards a carry, or better. And and for me, that's the benchmark of a, a great running back is four yards a carry. Exactly. And and Zeke can do so much out of the backfield. He's a great blocking back. He's great with um. He's great at catching the ball out of the backfield. He's better than and Pollard. And catching the ball out of the backfield, and so and and, and looking at uh, this is uh, overthecap.com. So in 2023, they right now projected they have 8.6 million, and then in 90, and then in 2014 they have 97 million projected. So you can you can. You could sign Pollard to a two-year deal and make sure he's going to be the man, you know. And this isn't just a contract year type type uh, player, you know. That that's the other that's another thing you got to think about is the fact that Pollard's in a contract year, and if next you know if they sign him to a you know a six-year, one hundred twenty-eight million dollar deal because he's the back of the future and he absolutely falls on his face, then Jerry Jones looks like an idiot. Yes. Exactly. That's why I'm saying, you know, it's a, it's a damn if you do, damn if you don't situation. So you've got you've got um, 
and, and especially when you have a, you know, if they let if they let Zeke walk and he goes to Washington or he goes to Seattle or L.A., you know, and he has another thousand yard season, ten touchdown, Pro Bowl type 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 year, and and Pollard falls on his face, well then. The fan base is going to be up in arms. Why didn't we? Why didn't we keep that Zeke? Why did we keep Zeke? Why didn't we keep Zeke? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Anything else, gentlemen? You guys want to talk about? I got my Twitter back. Uh, yeah. Before we go, I just want to wish y'all happy Thanksgiving. Y'all yes. Be safe. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well. Thanks, out there. Same to y'all. Yeah, there won't be a show next okay. week, guys, because right. we're you know that's Thanksgiving Day. I'm not gonna. Be be I'm, gonna I'm gonna be busy cooking my brisket and in my crock pot. Slow cooking that boy. Yeah, I won't be getting home until the end anyway. So. What, Adam? Mm. what did you say, Adam? I said one single tear. <laughs> I ain't got nothing going on next Thursday, so. <laughs> If you guys want to go ahead and do your uh, but show I, announcements, go right ahead. But uh, right. I can tell y'all this. If any of y'all live close down by here, y'all y'all be more than welcome to come over here. We'll be here. I think it's a bit of a drive. <laughs> yeah. Now, you, would have, you would have to leave now just to get here by Thanksgiving. Right. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I think it's trouble. Yesterday. <laughs> Chattanooga to Austin. Yeah. Well, go ahead, Lou. Didn't okay, mean to sports show. We keep rolling. Uh, Saturday, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern time. For Gerald, that's 3 to 5. And for those of you in uh, Australia, it's uh, 6 a.m. the next day. Um, number, number, of course, is 512-543-4662. I'll repeat that again, 512-543-4662. Yeah, we're going to be discussing, of course, the uh, MLB awards. There's quite a few of them. Uh, we'll also discuss the MLB free agent frenzy going on. Our college, our our BCS uh, BCS poll, the college football predictions, the uh, World Cup soccer update, update because well preview because the the uh, first game starts on Sunday morning, so I want to get everybody's thoughts on that, and of course the college and NFL predictions. So if you got you got time, call in from four to six p.m. Eastern time. Uh, of course, there will not be a show next Saturday because I want to give everybody time off. You know, to celebrate the Thanksgiving weekend. So then after that, we'll be back for the final three shows of the year. I think my fifth year. Wow. So, number, so, uh, and I'm working on my old. second year. I'm working on my second year. Right. Boy, I'm getting really old. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, me too, Lou. Me too. No, but I've been this longer than you have. <laughs> Remember, because in, in 2023, I'm going to be celebrating my 10th year in this. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. wow. So it's a, it's a milestone. I'm going to be celebrating my second year. So hey, that's well, that's ten, tenth, of, tenth overall, Gerald. I mean, I, I, I did stuff before I went, you know, like this. I started, I started on a local small outlet. But so. you know, I'm grateful that Kevin did give me a, give me a shot to uh, have my own show. Yes, same, same with all of us all. And, so I think, and I'm trying, and I'm trying my best to uh, make it the best that I can. That's all we can do. Yep. So if you got time on Saturday, you can give a call. I'd love to hear from you. As, and of course, because it's Thanksgiving as well, Thanksgiving weekend. So I'd like to give Rody, you know, hopefully a chance to, to call in. Anybody else? Well, I'm going to predict it now because we won't be here next Thursday to predict it then. But I'm taking Michigan all the way. Okay. Ohio State. I don't know. Ohio State and Michigan. And Columbus in the cold, we're going to run it down their throat all day long. All I know is it's going to be a good game. I'm going to say this right now. I'm going to take Michigan. I'm going to take Florida, not Florida State. Right. Rich, get ready to be wearing a Gator hat, buddy, because we're beating your ass in Tallahassee next year. Yeah. Uh, and we'll send you a live alligator. Yeah. I'm going, I'm going to have to go Michigan and – in that Ohio State game, because Ohio State's been number two for too long. It's time for another team to, to move up to that number two spot. Because I want to see Rich. I want to see Rich in the in another hat besides besides uh, the hat. Also, proving one thing too. 
It just sucks to be number two. <laughs> hey. Second is the first loser. Ooh, right. Lord. That's yeah, why. But Ohio State's been at number two for too long. Exactly. Well, I, I, yeah. Uh, and you've got the best. You got the number one, the number one Loser. offensive line in college football. So we're just gonna do what we do. Let the chips fall where they may. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we are stuck in the Blake Corum, Donovan Edwards, JJ McCarthy. We gonna we gonna run the ball. We're gonna run it right down their throat and dare us to stop them. And Lou, I will call into your show Thursday because uh, we're supposed to be in the we're not supposed to get out of the 30s here in Austin. Thursday, I mean Saturday. Saturday. I'm sorry. Thank I'm, you. I'm, think, I'm thinking about Thanksgiving already. <laughs> why, are all, why are we all though? Uh, no no yeah, harm in that. Show Saturday because uh, we're not supposed to get out of the 30s here Saturday. Luckily, not in Buffalo. Uh, yes, so, they got to move the game to Detroit. Yeah. So I'm not gonna have. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna want to go outside and do anything in 30 degree weather. Who would? They're predicting 72 inches of snow. Yeah. In fact, I think it's already starting. Six six feet over the weekend. You can keep it, Adam. Don't send it this way. Don't send it here. That's no, I don't want it either. That's why I moved. I don't want it down here. We, we, we've already had a, a bad snowstorm. Uh, what was yes. It? Back in February? Yeah. I don't want to see no more in my lifetime. <laughs> I don't want to brag, but it's going to be 80 degrees here next week. So just yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Right here, Bradley. Right here. Right here. 80 it's degrees. Be, it's going to be 80 next week, just to throw that out. Send it, okay, I tell you what. Send that 80 degrees down this way. You can send that this way, too. It's, nice. it's going to be it's going to be being the mid-50s, though, next week. Well, I'll take that for 30 degrees any day. My AC's been off for the past uh, few days now. Saving on that energy bill, though. Yep. There you go. <laughs> yes. Extra, yep. Uh, it's going to be. But uh, good news is uh, we did qualify for uh, the home repair program, like I was telling y'all about. Oh, good. sweet. Good. Uh, Congrats. Yep. They should start within three months. Uh, the reason why my central air unit, uh, I mean my central heat unit, didn't work is because the ducts are uh, totally destroyed. Hmm. There's no putting them back together. It, it's what they call finished, done, finito. So what they're going to do is they can put a, a heat pump. I never heard of a heat pump that goes in a window. Mm. I, guess cool. it's like, I guess it's like a AC that has a heater on it or something. They can put it in a window, and they said it's supposed to heat up to 12,000 square foot. It's 20 to 9 now. Just over three minutes to go in the third, or four minutes to go in the third. Okay. But Green Bay's got the ball, and they're driving a bit. Well, with that, guys, I want to thank these three gentlemen joining me every Thursday. Um, everyone out there that watches the show, um, thank you guys so much. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone that celebrates it on Thursday. There won't We won't be back till the first day of December. Uh, we will have, I think, three right. shows left because I think December 8th, there won't be a show. I think two of us won't be available. Uh, but we will be back on December 1st. We'll be talking about – by then we'll know who probably is in the college football playoff, I would imagine, with the season. We'll know the championship so, games for sure. Championship and games for sure. And also by then we should know who's in the NFL playoffs and all that. Yeah, probably not. No, that's – Yeah, I don't think anything. Yeah, there's still a lot of, lot of NFL football left. But we can make our predictions on who's going to. Correct. Oh, we'll, we'll have a much better idea than we do today. <laughs> exactly. Let's say that again. But anyway, we'll have a much better... uh, again, guys, you know, um, this uh, this has been the Walker Report, part of In the Zone Sports Talk Radio, part of NGSC Sports. Guys, remember the website. It's NGSCSports.com uh, for all your current sports content. And if you guys want to, I do write for NGSC, so head over to the website. My articles are over there. I'll have one up tomorrow night after the USF Tulsa game. And then, of course, the final mm-hmm. home game will be next Saturday, the day of the weekend of Thanksgiving, will be my last USF game for the 2023 season. So I'm hoping, again, that I'll be back there next year. I don't think I have to worry anymore now because I've been doing it for five years. So unless I screw it up, <laughs> it will, I don't think I'm going to have an issue with it. Right. Um, we have a response. 
sponsored by CreatingZenSpaces.com and Garrett's Carrots. Uh, again, there will not be a show next week, obviously, due to the Thanksgiving holiday. I also want to give a shout out to the men and women in our armed services and our first responders. Thank you guys for doing because, again, we wouldn't be able to celebrate our holidays without you guys, whether you're domestic, foreign, stuff like that. Thank you very much. Until December 1st, guys, everyone stay safe. Have a good Thanksgiving. This is the Sports Third. Peace. Good night, folks. All right, Brent, send it.